Welcome back everyone. It is currently June 4th, 2024, and we have some more hot fixes that came out recently um, during World of Warcrafts by Blizzard, uh, their big weekly update. So we have a few different days to actually cover because they release uh, three or two minor patches and a big patch that just came out to, that was implemented today. So we are going to cover that and we're going to start with the one that actually came out literally like a day or two after I posted last week's. So starting off with May 20th, 29th, 2024, um, the updates that came out on that day were for one, two, three, four, five different aspects of the game. You have your classes, your PVP, your quests, your WoW remix, Mr. Pandera, and then your Cataclysm Cat Classic. So starting from the top the most important one at least in my opinion is the classes um, shaman their restoration has the resolved the issue that dealt with restoration has been resolved which was causing restoration shaman season four two-piece class sets bonuses to be canceled when healing stream totem expired while two or more healing stream totems were active so that has been fixed um, for warlocks affliction They've resolved the issue causing Drain Life to sometimes incorrectly consume mana while Soul Rot is active. Um, Warriors got a the protection. Looks like Battle uh, Scarred Veterans have been updated. Now when damage event reduces your health below 30%, the portion of that damage event that would apply to the last 30% of your health is also reduced by 80%. Uh, this is the developer's note, for example. If you are at 50% health and you receive damage for 40% of your health, your damage taken will be 20% plus 20% times, and then in parentheses, 1 mi minus 0.8 or 24%. And you will have 26% health remaining when Battle Scarred Veteran activates. So much just convoluted crap they didn't need having that that developer note they could have just said you would have had just 26 percent remaining next on to player player versus player also known as pvp um, the evoker has been resolved the evoker specifically resolved an issue causing the dispel effect from scoring flames to fail on targets near the edge of fire breath so they've resolved that issue um, quest the quest giver for renown quest and Valdraken now again offers the continue waygate exploration quest uh, for WoW Remix Mist of Pandera. Uh, in game tuning adjustments have been made to heroic scenarios, heroic dungeons, and normal rates so that they increase in power more slowly between levels 60 and 70. Heroic and mythic rigs have been adjusted. Roggle has been adjusted so they're. Is a smoother transition between them. Uh, players who completed the Pearlfin Jinyu quest line can now bring lesser charms of good fortune to Elder Lucian for additional re reputation. Players who complete the, the Forest of Hosen quest line can now bring lesser charms of good fortune to Chief Kaka for, <laughs> for additional reputation. Fixed a bug that inadvertently capped the maximum stat that can be gained on a cloak of infinite potential. That cap has been removed. Sh uh, Shadow Panazolt reputation earned per boss kill increased to a thousand was three hundred. That's a big big update. This amount is available daily now. Elder Great Turtles and Ancient Spine Claws have migrated back to the timeless shores, which should benefit players who are just killing time. Illusion, Shock Corruption can now be destroyed by players who have already learned it elsewhere. They adjusted and attuned several gem effects such as Arcanist Edge Absorbs Amount that can now be converted into damage has been doubled. Uh, the Fervor Health Amounts that can be converted into damage has been doubled. doubled sorry. Righteous Frenzy Damage dealt to targets increased to 2% per second was originally 1%. Searing Light collected healing points increased to 10, was originally 7. Slay cannot critically strike. Um, developer note here, Slay still hits for the player's entire health amount. 
and will remain an incredibly powerful option. Next, Ward of Salvation no longer applies a heal absorb. It has been reworked so that the caster's heals are duplicated as an absorb shield, but not other sourcing of healing. No other developers know. Ward of Salvation will remain a powerful way for healers to deliver some additional damage, but should not trivialize the most difficult raid encounters. Okay, that's all for a WoW, Mists of Pandera, Pandaria, sorry. Cataclysm Classic, uh, they fix an issue that could cause disconnect while aiming and shooting the siege tank during the battle zone quest in Oldham. All right, so that's all they did for May 29th. Um, they had two minor updates for May 30th. Um, again, they reworked some stuff for WoW Remix, Miss uh, Pandaria. I know I'm butchering all this. I really apologize, but tough shit. Um, Righteous Frenzy can no longer be cast on non-party members. In the Throne of Thunder Dark Animus encounter, the increased damage and attack speed by Anima Golems casting acceleration links has been reduced to 100% per stack. It was originally 250. In the Throne of Thunder Iron Quan encounter, Stormcloud should no longer deal extreme damage to players. In a Brewing Storm, Vile Tongue uh, Skirmishers, Vile Tongue Sting now reduce healing by 60%. It originally was 90. They fixed a bug that unintentionally added additional enemy health for highly geared players against heroic raid bosses. Developer note here. In combination with previous recent hotfixes, this should result in health and damage versus heroic raid bosses being an intended for player at higher and lower item levels so that players of mixed item levels can have a better experience playing together. Overall, players with higher item levels should do greater damage and have greater survivability. Cool. Um, then they had the only other big update they had that day is for Cataclysm Classic. Um, looks like they had six. One of them starting from the top. When Nitro Boost malfunctions and Raid Encounter, they will now also grant increased movement speed as well as damage to their users. The Greater Inscription Shoulder Enchants available at Exalted with Therizane are now bind, bind to account. Um, then they had four fixes for classes. Death Knights, they fix an issue where Death Knights sometimes did not gain the benefit of improved blood presence. Uh, for Priests, they fix an issue where spell casting haste from the Time Warp and Primal Rage was able to stack with power infusion spells, casting haste, which was not intended. Rogue uh, Blind can no longer trigger poisons applied to the rogue's ranged weapon. And then lastly, Warlock fixed an issue where some Warlocks retain the benefit of Nemesis talent from Wrath of the Lich King Classic, which no longer exists in Cataclysm Classic. Okay. Not, I mean, not too bad. All right, and then on to the most recent one. The final one that came out and got applied today. Um, they have one for they have one for dungeon, two for items, one for player versus player, three for WoW remix again, and three five for Cataclysm Classic, and one for Season of Discovery. So starting from the top, Dungeons and Rage, uh, Neltheris fix an issue where canceling Dragon Strike using invisibility will lead to Chargeth not casting ground change. For items, they fix two issues. Fix an issue where Aguri of Primal Flame would not proc certain effects such as Seal of Diurn uh, I'm gonna butcher this. Diurna Chosen and Seal of the Philafall Duty. English isn't my forte. Yeah, I'm struggling here. Fix an issue where Tome on of unstable power could proc from non-class spell effects such as self damage from vessel of searing shadows on to player versus players victories and solo shuffle now reward five crests was three and victories and rated 2v2 and rated 3v3 arenas arenas now reward two crests was one um, for wow remix missed a uh, pandaria mini mana bomb for the Horde and Theramore Tavern for the Alliance are now available from Oros at any Infinite Bazaar 
or players who have completed Theramore's Fall for their given faction on any Time Runner. Developers note, there is no more need to complete it at exactly level 35. Fix an issue where some steps on the infinite power achievement could be skipped for players. Uh, tough of Yakfer, am I right? Now they stack. Cool. Uh, Cataclysm Classic, they had honor rewards from completing a random battleground or holiday battleground have been increased by 100%. Fix an issue with Admiral Ripsnarl's visual effect. Fix a bug preventing the completion of achievement. Um, Acropocalypse now. The priest had two fixes. Atonement healing with, will now deprioritize pets and will only heal them if their health is very low compared to available player targets. It will treat them as if their health percentage is 50% or higher when evaluating targets. They also fixed an issue with shadowy uh, apparitions that prevented them from being summoned under certain certain circumstances and then for shamans they fix a bug with or a problem sorry they fixed a problem with precision where it was granting an unintended amount additional one to three percent chance to hit all right and lastly season discovery address an issue that caused quest goblin solution to sneakily steal extra mines from you all right so that is all they had for world of warcraft's updates and hot fixes uh, again as of june 4th they release updates as they need to uh every tuesday is their big hot fix um so it's when they push everything out and they make sure it's stabilized at that point so yeah hopefully we have another game to update on as well uh, as there are tons of games that we're going to try to cover as we come upon them. So stay tuned for the next video game. All right, next game up on the list this is going to be a short and sweet one as it is Call of Duty Warzone. We are addressing uh, Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone exclusively in these current patch notes. Um, we will look and see if multiplayer or zombies had any changes, but for Warzone, it's a very short update and patches for Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. General updates, Warzone reward under the mode challenge. The plunder challenge has been changed to complete 20 plunder games. Nice. Gameplay updates. Medical cabinets will now drop, uh, or sorry, perk packets will now drop for medical cabinets. There we go. Precision airstrike have been reverted back to their previous functionality prior to season four. Uh, weapons, DG58 LSW, took a, a what I would consider a, a good nerf to it. Uh, min damage, minimum damage decreased to 22. It's down from 27. Max damage range has also been decreased to 17.78 meters. It's down from 29.21. New damage range have, or new damage ranges added though. Near mid damage set to 27. Near mid damage range set to 30.48 meters. Mid damage set to 25. Mid damage range now set to 45.72 meters. Developer note states the DG58 LSW was a bit too dominant at range, so they have introduced a gradual damage fall off, which keeps it competitive at those close mid range counters, but now falls off slightly as you approach those longer range fights. And then finally, bugs fix. Fix an issue causing the bomb drone to remain on the player's screen and fix an issue preventing controller players from opening the manage party function when their squad is full. So let's go find and look into zombies and multiplayer, see if anything's updated there. All right, and upon looking into season four of the patch notes for uh, multiplayer, it does not look as though there has been any changes for multiplayer or zombies so that would be all for here let's dive into the next game all right the next game we have up is destiny 2 and this is going to be a long segment this is going to be a long portion there's a lot of stuff to cover as final shape which is the the last big dlc that's coming out for destiny 2 uh 
in their current saga, in their current storyline, this is the last one um, that's going to kind of wrap up the saga that we're in right now. And then everything after it will be new storyline, new saga, new, just everything. But this is a massive, massive update. There is just a, a ton of content. So we're going to try to go through it as quickly as possible. And when I say a ton, I mean, there's just, just so fucking much. So I do apologize for how long this segment is. If you're not a Destiny 2 fan or Destiny 2 player, go ahead and scrub through it. I don't know the timeline yet because we're recording it right now. So let's get into it. This is Destiny 2 update 8.0.0.1. Again, right before Final Shape uh, uh, takes over and comes out. Literally, it's the last update. Tomorrow, which uh, today's June 4th, tomorrow, June 5th, Final Shape comes out. So let's get into activities. Uh, they have one, two, three, four, five. So let's get into it. But there's a lot more, but just under the activities. So Crucible, competitive will now be blended 1-1-1, special ammo system in place of crate system. We will begin rolling the system out to other playlists soon. Uh, and this is from Bungie, by the way. Adjusted spawns on Altar of Flame and Dead Cliffs for Countdown Rush to improve match balance. Update private match screens to support expanded options and improve usability. Updated sound effects for rank promotions and defense toasts in competitive to better combat success or failure. Fix an issue where Relic Meter was not correctly progressing in Relic. Fix an issue where private match activity modifiers would display inaccurately. Shadow Keep. Fix an issue in the mission beyond where players would sometimes get stuck without the activity progressing them correctly. Warlord's Ruin. Fix an issue in Warlord's Rune where the sound effects that occurred after a player is frozen by the Tempest Storm did not play correctly. Croches in. Fix an issue preventing completion of All for One Challenge and Associated Triumphs. The Pantheon. Fix an issue where the Pantheon emblem appeared in the general category rather than the raids category and collections. Right. For UI and UX, they had four. General. Added a gameplay subtitle option that displays the speaker's name before their dialogue. This option is off by default to activate. Navigate to the option menu and toggle it on. This feature does not affect cinematic subtitles. They add reputation boost information for ritual activities to the director. Hovering over the ritual nodes at the top of the directors. And then parentheses Vanguard, are Crucible, and Gambit will display reputation boosts that are active. Fix an issue where dungeon tracking stats were not displayed on emblems. Fire Team Finder. Improved placement and visuals of the reselecting activity buttons so players have a better access to it. Fix an issue where Fire Team finding Finder lobbies for Crucible Labs weren't allowing the correct max number of players for the activity. Fix an issue where in some Fire Team Finder applications, player status was not displayed properly. For guardian rank slash journey screen, made the visual functional, functional improvement to the journey screen and guardian ranks icons. They fixed an issue where the cherished guardian rank objective displayed the incorrect accommodation score requirement. Quest, um, added milestone to the quest log. Milestones will not count against a player's maximum quest slash bounty cast, uh, capacity. Track quest will be sorted to the top of their categories when the quest log is reloaded next. Add an option to set a specific quest tab as default. The, que uh, the default quest tab will be the first tab open when the quest log is loaded. They added text to the quest tooltip to communicate when a quest is directly launchable from the quest detail screen. So, I mean, that could be handy. All right, and then for gameplay and investments, they have this, this is the big one, all right? Start off with abilities. All subclass, subclasses. All subclasses, or sorry, all super abilities now use the same damage base recharge parameters. Previously, energy gained through damage dealt and received was scaled based on the passive recharge rate of the super, resulting in a broader delta between long super recharge supers and short recharge supers than intended. This will this will, for example, bring the real world uptime. Uh, Ward of Dawn and Well of Radiance closer to the uptime of a super like Arc Staff or Fist of Havoc. All right, for the Arcs of classes Arc Strider, Arc Staff, heavy Palm Strike attacks, and heavy Air Slams by blinds enemies now. 
disorienting bow blow decreases base cooldown time from 100 seconds to 90 seconds tempest strikes added additional damage resistance versus uh, player versus environment combatants when active lingering for a short duration after the attack striker knockout increase bonus damage granted to power melee attacks versus player versus environment pve by the way combatants from 25 percent to 50 percent they rework healing behavior no longer unstunned health regeneration on melee defeats now instantly grants a chunk of healing that scales with the type of target defeated uh player 30 health points minor combatants 50 health points major combatant 75 health point champion or above combatant 100 health points touch of thunder lightning grenade now applies jolt after the first damage event rather than prior this means that jolt won't instantly pop on application and attackers will need to either wait for the second lightning burst from the grenade or deal additional damage via other means to trigger the jolt's chain effect storm grenade Increase tracking traveling speed when targeting PVE combatants by between 0.5 and 1 meters per second, increasing the storm's lifetime. Thunderclap. Added additional damage resistance versus PVE combatants when activated, lingering for a short duration after the attack. Increase minimum damage versus PVE combatants by 20%. Increase maximum damage versus PVE combatants by 33%. Increase maximum damage versus enemy player by 14%. Stormcaller, Lightning Surge, added additional damage resistant versus player, uh, PvE combatants when activated, lingering for a short duration after the attack. This is intended to help players survive during the final Lightning Strike performance until players return to first person and can maneuver out of danger. Ball Lightning, increase the final arming shape by 30%. Fix an issue where the army shape was off, offset upwards, higher than the maximum damage range of the projectiles that nation. Change lightning, chain lightning. Increase secondary chain projectile base damage from 27 to 54. That's a good one. Art grenade, storm grenade. Increase damage versus play, uh, PVE. Combatants by 20%. Touch of thunder variant damage is unchanged. Skip grenade. Increased damage versus PvE combats by 15. Arc Bolt Grenade. Increased damage versus PvE combats by 15%. Arc Fragments. A spark of Recharge. Ability Regeneration Bonus now persists until the player returns to full shields rather than deactivating as soon as the shield begins to recharge. Spark of Beacons. Now also triggers on defeating targets with Arc Power Ammo weapons while amplified. Uh, Spark of Frequencies now also grants 15 weapon stability on powered melee hit in addition to its reload benefits. That is all the ARC updates. Ooh. For Solar Subclass updates. Again, this is going to be a long one, guys. Apologies. Solar General. Restoration. Restoration's full body visual effects now reduce their intensity while the player's super is active. Active, sorry. Cure. Cure's healing now takes place over 0.1 second rather than instantly. This change is unlikely to affect Cure's efficiency, efficacy in a meaningful way, but it's primarily intended to improve the readability of Cure's heal in the middle of combat in the UI. Gunslinger. Lightweight Knife. Now has two melee charges by default. Increase throw animation speed by 33%. Reduce suppression time between throws so knives can be thrown very quickly back to back. Additional melee charge does not stack with Ophidia's spat, spath, I'm butchering that, due to the exotic's unique energy recharge behavior. We'll be monitoring this and evaluating how things are playing once things go live. Again, this will all go live to, uh, today and tomorrow. Knock them down, reduce internal cooldown by throwing on throwing knives, refund from 1 second to 0 0.2 seconds. Wow. Gunpowder Gamble. Fix an issue where Gunpowder Gamble was unable to damage Strand Tangles. Golden Gun. Golden Gun Marksman. Reduce strength of orbs of power created on precision hit as followed. When hitting non-boss enemies, reduce strength from 0.75x to 0.5x of a normal super orb of power. When hitting boss enemies, reduce strength from 0.75x to, point, to about 0.4x of super, normal super orb of power. 
when hitting boss enemies while Star Eater scales is equipped. Reduce strength from 0.75 to about 0.35x of normal super orb of power. Sunbreaker Consecration. Consecration Slam attack can now shatter stasis crystal, crystals. Ignition generated by Consecration now deals 20% additional damage to PvE combatants. Fix an issue where concentration, uh, consecration Slam attack was sometimes unable to damage flowing combatants while they were grounded. Fix an issue where Consecration intended PvE damage resistance was not being applied. Hammer of Soul, increased projectile submunition count when Soul with Invictus is not equipped as follows. If projectile detonates within the first 0.7 seconds of its lifetime, it now creates four shrapnel submunitions up from three. If the projectile detonates after the first 0.7 seconds of its lifetime, it now creates six shrapnel up from five. When Soul Evictus is equipped, only three sh shrapnel submunition are created regardless of flight time. Shrapnel submunition sub now deals additional damage when Soul Evictus is not equipped with the damage increasing after the first 0.7 seconds of its projectile's lifetime. Oh man. Dawnblade, Heat Rises. Fix an issue where throwing some grenades while Heat Rises was equipped would produce void visual effects on the player's hand during the throw. Well of Radiance now grants Radiance for 8 seconds when players exit the Well of Radiance area. Reduce player survivability while standing in the Well of Radiance Aurora. Aura. Reduce healing per second from 100 to 50 health points, matching Restoration X2. Increase healing on cast from 40 to 300 health points. God damn. Reduce damage resistance versus non-boss combatant combatants from 40% to down to 20%. Reduce damage resistance versus boss combatants from 40% to 10%. Damage resistance versus enemy players is unchanged. Increase maximum orbs of power from defeating targets while in the player's well of radiance aurora, aura from 4 to 5. Soul grenades, swarm grenades, um, increase tracking shape size from 4 meters to 6 meters, increase linger duration from 7 to 8 seconds to, sorry, 7 8 seconds to 10 11 seconds, increase damage versus PvE combatants by 20%. That is all the solar. Void subclasses. Void General Fix fix an issue where Volatile could fail to auto-detonate if the target was defeated by the damage event that applied the Volatile effect. Night Stalker. Night Stalker Snare Bomb. Increased linger duration of smoke after detonation from 3 seconds to 5 seconds. Now applies small damage over time to enemies in the smoke, which increases in strength the longer they remain in the smoke. Trapper's Ambush. Increase linger duration of uh, smoke debt after detonation from 4.5 seconds to 6 seconds. Now apply snare bombs damage over time to enemies caught in smoke. Fix an issue where trapper's ambush, trapper's ambush smoke effect could be obstructed by ground geometry. Stylish Executioner. Stylish Executioner's weakened effect can now be applied by glaive melee attacks. Sentinel. Shield throw. Increase maximum bounce from... 4 to 5, increase maximum lifetime from 3 seconds to 4 seconds. Now increases its track, tracking shape, size, and strength after each bounce, increasing its ability to consistently find a new target. Slightly increase gravity and decrease thrush, thrust speed with each bounce. Increase damage versus PvE targets by 20%. Ward of Dawn. Armor of Light. Remove armor, light overshield. Ward of Dawn now immediately applies on full void overshield to the caster and allies that enters its dome. Armor of light now instead grants additional damage resistance to players inside the Ward of Dawn. 30% versus enemy players and 60% versus enemy combatants. Effective health of players inside the Ward of Dawn, Dawn Dome remains roughly the same as it was before versus PvE combatants. Effective health of players inside the Ward of Dawn is significantly lower than it was before versus other players in PvP and cannot be further increased by stacking Bastion Barricades inside the Ward to gain additional overshield layers. No longer provides Weapon of Light by default. The behavior has been 
moved to the benefits of Helm of St. 14. Allies near the Ward of Dawn Dome now have Void Overshield trickled on overtime, similar to the volume behind of Bastion's Barricade. This trickle rate is reduced in PvP activities. The Ward of Dawn caster can now generate additional orbs of power by defeating enemies with melee attacks in or near their Ward of Dawn Dome up to a maximum of 5. Offensive Bulwark Bulwarks are and now only extend Void Overshield Timer to its normal maximum duration to prevent an issue where players could get into a bad timer state. Now regenerates a small portion of the player's active Void Overshield with each melee defeat. Void Walkers. Chaos Accelerate. Magnetic Grenades. Increase maximum intensity of phys uh, physics knockback. Impulse by 10%. Increased damage versus PvE. Combatants by 20 now passively decreases the player's magnetic grenade cooldown by 10% when Chaos Accelerant is equipped. Pocket simul Singularity increased detonation damage by versus PvE combatants by about 50%. Nova Bomb Cataclysm Variant increased Seeker count from 4 to 6, fixed an issue where Seeker could impact the environment on crea uh, creation. Vortex variant, increased vortex linger duration from 7 seconds to 10 seconds, fixed an issue where the linger visual effects were shutting off early. Void grenade, suppressor grenade, damage radius now matches suppressor's radius. This does not meaningfully change the damage profile of the grenade, but it's intended to provide additional feedback to the player when they have a successful have successfully suppressed a target. So that'll be helpful. Void wall grenade fix an issue where the central damage volume was offset significantly lower than the left or right volumes. Void fragment echoes of instability can now be activated by defeating targets with forerunners. The rock grenade no longer displays its HUD buff text unless a void weapon is readied. As all for void. All right, stasis subclass. Yeah, I told you all. There's a lot. Stasis General, new frost armor keyword. You are fortified by layers of durable, durable stasis matter, reducing incoming damage. Frost on armor damage resistance grows stronger as the player gains additional stacks. Reduces damage from PVE combatants by 4.5% per stack and every enemy player by 2% per stack. Stasis Shatter, increased base PVE shatter damage from 200 to 400. Ooh, that's a good increase. Fix an issue where bosses auto shattering were being hit by two instances of shattering damage. Fix an issue where players and an active super would show immune damage flyouts when automatically breaking out of stasis freeze. Revenant uh, Grim Harvest added a new behavior while Grim Harvest is equipped. Stasis shards grant a small amount of health and a stack of frost armor. Large stasis shards from Grim Harvest grants more health and frost armor stacks. Now has a standardized cooldown when a large number of shards are created very quickly. Winter Shroud added new behavior, slowing targets briefly increases the player's class ability regeneration rate. Bonus is reduced in PVP game modes. Now grants PVE damage reduction when activated. Touch of Winter, Cold Snap Grenades, no longer chains an additional time while Touch of Winter is equipped. Instead, Seekers now duplicate when, the free, when they freeze a target. Uh, second and third Seeker chains now create a medium and large stasis crystal, respectively, rather than every chain creating a small crystal. Glacier Grenade added an additional stasis crystal to the ring formation, increasing the total count from 6 to 7. Glacier Glacier grenade now glacier grenade ring now forms over 0.27 seconds rather than instantaneously. Silence and squall increase squall maximum travel speed by 10%. Squall storm now slows down when any enemy is within its area of effect to reduce instance where it could overshoot its target. Increase damage and slow tick rate versus PvE combatants by about 40%, bringing its freeze time from approximately 0.8 seconds to roughly 0.5 seconds. Behemoth, 
tectonic harvest added new behavior while tectonic harvest is equipped stasis shards grant a small amount of health and stacks of frost armor now creates a stasis shard when shattering a frozen target in addition to shattering stasis crystal crystals now has a standardized cooldown when a large stack of or large number of shards are created very quickly glacial quake now automatically begins sprinting when the player throttles forward this change should make shattering the player's stasis crystals significantly more intuitive to the heat of combat increase on cast freeze repulsive impulse radius versus pve components from six meters to eight meters shiver strike increased damage versus pve combats by 10 percent increased size of melee target search area cone by 50 percent increased maximum lunge tracking angular speed from seven degrees per second to about 21 degrees per second the end result of these changes is that shiver strike misses significantly less and is able to be bend it and and is able to bend its lunge trajectory more to find a target within its search area Diamond Lance, increased thrown Diamond Lance detonation radius from 3.5 meters to 5 meters, increased Diamond Lance slam detonation radius from 6.75 meters to 8 meters versus PVE combatants. Diamond Lance now shatters stasis crystals on direct impact. That uh, reduced Diamond Lance pickup interaction time from 0.2 seconds to 0.1 second, matching strand tangles. Increased dit diamond lance pickup interaction radius from 0.7 meters to 3 meters matching strand tangles cryo cryoclism remove sprint time cryoclism now goes on cooldown for four seconds after one extended slide shade binder glacier har harvest Added new behavior while Glacier Harvest is equipped, Stasis Shards grant a small amount of health and a stack of frost armor. Now has standardized cooldown when a larger number of shards are created very quickly. Ice Flare Bolts increase maximum seeker created before going on cooldown from 5 to 7. Stasis Fragments Whisper of Rhyme rework no longer it's a straight Stasis Shard overshield when collecting Stasis Shard. Now increases the maximum duration of stack accounts. On now increases the maximum duration and stack count of the player's frost armor. Struggling here. Whisper of Chains rework no longer grants passive damage resistance when near a stasis crystal or frozen target. Now grants a chance to create a stasis shard when defeating a target while the player have one or more stacks of frost armor. Whisper of Fractures reworked, no longer increases melee energy regeneration while surrounded by enemies. Now grants a stack of frost armor when the player shatter any frozen target with its melee attack. Whisper of Torment, grenade energy gains are no longer dependent on the player's current health value. Base grenade energy regeneration amount per incoming damage event increased from 5 to 7%. While the player has frost armor, energy per damage event increases from 7 to 12. Whisper of Chill, new fragment. Stasis weapons, final blow, have a chance to create a stasis shard. Whisper of Reversal, also new fragment. While the player has frost armor, dealing or receiving physical melee, i.e. not projectile melee, damages slow the player's victim or attacker. That is all the stasis. Just so we know, we're nine. We're about halfway through Bungie's patch note article here. A lot. Strand subclass. This should be the final one. Strand general grapple tangles no longer fully refresh the duration when grapple two. Now increase the duration by a maximum of five seconds per grapple, reduced to a maximum of one second added after five consecutive grapples to the same grapple tangle. Grapple melee can no longer be activated after firing a weapon, similar to sprint or slide activated melee abilities. Tangles, tangles will now be paired with the text pick up tangle instead of only pick up. Thread runner, ensnaring slam, detonation volume versus enemy player is now a cylinder with a 6.5 meter, rate, meter radius, 
rather than a sphere with an 8 meter radius. This results in fewer instances of victims correctly attempting to counterplay by jumping but being caught by the ensnaring slam detonation high up in the air. Threaded Spectre, arming shape versus PVE combatants now grows more quickly, resulting in more responsive detonation when used in close quarters. Threaded Spike, reduced damages versus enemy players from 79 to 70. Catching a threaded spike no longer breaks invisibility. Berserker, into the fray, reduce melee energy regeneration scholar scalar from 4x to 3x in PvE activity, unchanged in PvP activities though. Banner of War, reduce maximum timer from 30 seconds down to 24 seconds. Melee, glaive melee, and super damage bonuses now have diminishing returns with Syntoseps as follow. Melee bonuses decreases from 1.5x to 1.1, sorry, 1.4x to 1.15x. Glaive melee bonuses decreases from 1.25x to 1.125x. Super bonuses decreases from 1.4x to 1.2x. Melee and glaive melee damage bonuses now have diminishing returns with Warm God, Warm God Caress 2. Melee bonuses decreases from 1.4x to 1.1x based on stack count. Glaive melee bonuses decreases from 1.4x to 1.05x, again based on stack count. Frenzy's Blade slash Blade Fury reduced the forward offset for melee lunge target point from 0.4 meters to 0.18 meters. This should reduce instances where attempting to lunge to a target while at very close range, resulting in the characters lunging backwards. All right. Brood Weaver, Weaver's Call, added new behavior. Defeating a target with strand damage now has a chance to generate a perch thread lane with a higher chance of generation from defeating more powerful targets. This damage can be from any source, including other, other threadlings. Strand Fragments, Thread of Warding, reduced woven mail duration on orb of power pickup from 10 seconds to five seconds. Thread of Propagation, that no longer displays its HUD buff text unless a strand weapon is readied. All right. Ooh, we're getting to the next big batch. You ready? Oh, I am not ready. This is this is a lot. So much. Exotic armor. Exotic armor can now be upgraded after it's been fully mastered, reworked, or sorry. Exotic armor can now be upgraded after it has been fully master worked granting an artifice mod artifice mod slot this comes at the cost of an exotic cipher and 10,000 glimmers hunter uh, let's see renewal grasp replace generic damage resistance with frost armor on entering your dusk field grenade volume you and allies gain a stack of frost armor about every 0.9 seconds an additional stack of frost armor is granted resetting the timer trait advice Glade projectile final blows now always trigger a detonation that matches the glaive's damage type, even when the glaive does not match the equipped subclasses. The surrounded effect provided by Triton Vice while wielding a glaive now lingers on player for five seconds after no longer being surrounded. The sixth coyote now creates an orb of power from final blows after using an ability. Sorry, using a class ability in addition to its previous behavior. This is implemented as the exotic granting a free copy of the Reaper Armor mods effect. Star Eater scales increase the orb of power required to grant maximum benefits from four to six, reduce the increased super energy gain per orb of power when the golden gun is equipped from 2% down to 0.5%. Fix an issue where super damage boost for attacks that occurred quickly after initial cast 
such as shadow shot at close range, was not always applied. They fixed an issue where a player could maintain the damage bonus after removing Star Eater skills. Uh, Bow Tracer now grants the bonus damage it inflicts on its target to weapons. The damage type also matches that of the ability used in the damage that target instead of always matching the equipped subclass. Assassin's Cal now requires a player to expend a melee charge or defeat an enemy via a finisher to activate Mask of uh, Mask of Bacris. There we go. Now requires a Stasis Super to be equipped instead of Stasis Subclass. Re-enable the Light Shift debuff in the HUD when the class ability is not recharging. This is cosmetic only. Change to keep the cooldown visible even while not holding a weapon that benefits from its damage boost. They also fixed an issue where the Mask of Bacris applied a Tier 2 damage buff instead of a Tier 4 and failed to display the time remaining on certain solar weapons. Additionally, the solar damage buff will now function in the Crucible 2. Uh, Bomb Bombarders now triggers an effect based on the equipped super element instead of equipped subclass. Celestial Nighthawk fixed an issue where players could swap from Celestial Nighthawk to Knucklehead Radar after activating their super and be granted the benefits from both exotics. Good. Dragon Shadow now triggers its effect when the player using Ensnaring Slam or the new Ascension Arc aspect. Liar's Handshake Counterpunch now does arc damage instead of kinetic. That is all for Hunter's Exotics. Titan Exotics. Helm of Saint 14 now causes Wearer's Ward of Dawn to apply the Weapons of Light buff to allies. Ursa Ferosa. Ferosa. Ugh. Now provides increased movement speed while guarding with the new Unbreakable Void aspect. Also grants super energy for guarding with Unbreakable that scales by, based on the amount of incoming damage the shield absorbs. Eternal Warrior no longer requires an arc subclass for arc final blows to grant its escalating arc power damage or weapon damage bonus. Sorry. Let me restart that. Eternal Warrior no longer requires an arc subclass for arc final blows to grant its escalating arc weapon damage bonus. Sorry. Arm, oh, I butchered this one, I'm sorry. Armamentarium, yep, butcher it, now creates an orb of power from grenade final blows in addition to its previous behavior. This is implemented as an exotic granting a free copy of Firepower Armor Mods effect. Capri's Horn. Capri's Horn increased the damage from the Solar Blast by 100% in PvE. The Solar Blast now scorches each time it hits a target instead of scorching only once. Capri's Horn now benefits from Ember of Eruption and Embers of Ashes. Plus 30 Scorch in PvE and plus 15 Scorch in PvP. Synthoseps reduce the amount of time that Bionic Enhancements Lingers after no longer being surrounded from 8 seconds to 5 seconds. This duration is now visible as a timer on the buff. Severance Enclosure now requires a player to expend a melee charge or defeat an enemy via a finisher to activate. Its explosion now requires a line of sight to damage enemies. We also reduce the knockback intensity of this explosion, which will, launch, which will now launch enemies more consistently vertically. Heart of Inmost Light now displays a single consolidated status effect on icon in the HUD to communicate states instead of the two to three it used before. The functionality of the exotic is unchanged. Let's see, One Eye Mask fixed an issue where the negative status effect applied to victims by One Eye Mask no longer persists after death. Precious Scars now requires a weapon matching the equipped super element instead of the equipped subclass. Horror Frost, Horror Frost Z, I'm, I'm betraying. Horror Frost Z, there we go. Horror Frost Z now requires a Stasis Super to be equipped instead of Stasis Subclass. Cadmus Ridge Lance Cap now requires a Stasis Supercharge to be equipped instead of Stasis Subclass. Lorely Splendor now requires a Solar Super to be equipped instead of just a Solar Subclass. No Backup Plans now requires Void Super to be equipped instead of Void Subclass. Path of Burning Steps. Now requires solar to be solar super to be equipped instead of solar subclass.
no backup plans. Now requires Void Super to be equipped instead of Void Subclass, Path of Burning Sept. Now requires Solar Sub Super to be equipped instead of Solar Subclass, Hollow Fire Heart. Now requires a Solar Super to be equipped instead of Solar Subclass. I think I repeat two of those. Apologies. But that is all the Titans exotics. Oh my god. Onward to the last one. Or the last class. Warlocks. Exotics. Volidors. Wraith Weavers. Replace Stasis Shard Overshield with Frost Armor. Activating Rift grants the player and nearby allies the maximum Frost Armor stacks when Frost Pulse is equipped. Activating Winter's Wraith Shatter Attack grants nearby allies the maximum number of stacks of Frost Armor. When Winter's Wrath ends, the players gain maximum stacks of Frost Armor. Mantle of, Mantle of Battle Harmony now grants super energy ranging between plus 1.5% and plus 4.5%, depending on the target type kill. Remove the two second cooldown for the perks activation. Now requires a weapon matching the e equipped super element instead of the equipped subclass. Sacent filaments. Update sacent filaments to require a void super instead of void subclass. Sacent filament empowering rift will now reset a player's existing devour buff duration back to 11 seconds when they enter it in addition to its previous behavior. Fix an issue where sacent, sacent filament Overload Rift was removing anti-champion capabilities granting by the artifact. Sunbracers reduce the increased solar grenade duration from 4 seconds to 2 seconds. Reduce its increased grenade recharge rate to allow a max of 4 grenades while the effect is active down from 5. Fix an issue where Sunbracers would not remove the Sunbracers ready buff from the players when they throw a grenade. Sintophant, Cenotaph, there we go, Cenotaph's Mask. Multi multiple players using Cenotaph Mask can no longer trigger its effect using a single enemy target. Cenotaph's target lock visual marker is now hidden from the exotic wearers and only applies to the wearer's ally. Uh, Verity Bo Bro, Brow, Jesus. Verity Brow now requires final blows with a weapon matching the player's grenade damage type instead of one matching the equipped subclass. Fell Winter's Helm now requires the player to expend a melee charge or defeat an enemy via a finisher to activate. Wings of Sacred Dawn updated its description to correctly indicate that its effects are only active when Dawn Blade is equipped rather than when all super solar supers. Controverse Hold updated its description to clarify that it would only work with Void Grenade charge with the Chaos Accelerant aspect. Chromatic Fire now triggers an effect based on player's equipped super element instead of the equipped subclass. Promethean Spur now works with any equipped super, solar super. Sanguine's Alchemy now requires a weapon matching the equipped super element instead of the equipped subclass. Vesper Radius, the ability for the Shockwave to blind now requires an arc super to be equipped instead of an arc subclass. Karnstein amulets fix an issue where Karnstein armlets, sorry, armlets visuals effect were not functioning correctly. Necrotic grips updated Necrotic grips description to note that it requires a melee and that it works against both combatants and players. All right, we're almost done. So let's see. Armor mods are next. The Artifice mod socket icon has been updated to make more distinct. Remove the energy cost from raid specific armor mods. Update all harmonic armor mods to change the element based off the current equipped super rather than subclass. This behavior is now explained in their description. A strain resistant mod has been added. Heavy ammo finder and special ammo finder armor mods now persist through progress towards an ammo brick through death. Heavy ammo finder and special ammo finder armor mods no longer function in Crucible, and opposing teams will no longer grant ammo finder progress in Gambit. Heavy ammo finder and special ammo finder mods will have their kill requirements increased by 20% for guardians in a fire team. Solo guardian requirements are unchanged, though. They fix an issue where orb of power mods 
would not pick up orbs when super energy was full. Mods affected our recuperation, which is a leg mod. Better already. Another leg. These are all leg mods, with the exception. Um, innervation, leg mod. Invigoration, leg mod. Insulation, leg mod. Absolution, leg mod. Orbs of restoration, also leg mod. And power, powerful friends, which is a helmet armor mod. Fix an issue where multiple copies of empowered finisher could be active at once in rare cases. Additionally, correct an issue where its tooltip did not describe it as having no stacking benefits. All right, and we have a few more. Um, weapons update heavy, heavy, adapted, and aggressive burst weapons intrinsic names to match burst count across all weapon archetypes. Functionality is unchanged. Two bursts is heavy burst. Includes sidearms, hand cannons, and pulse rifle. Three bursts are now adapted bursts. Includes sidearm, linear fusion rifles, and adapted pulse rifles. And then a four burst is aggressive burst. Includes pulse rifle. Removed the foundry name from the vest rapid fire, key precision, and the Omelon adapted weapon intrinsic. Then we have weapon arc types. Exotic primal, primary weapons and trace rifles, reduce damage bonus versus miners from 40% to 30% except fighting lion. Exotic primary weapons and trace rifle benefit from the below damage buff versus minor combatants. Increased base PVE damage versus all combatants, pulse rifles 20%, exception, the graviton lance and revision zeros, heavy burst mode. Um, sorry. Pellet shotgun, 10%, exception, legend, Acreus, Acreus, tractor cannon, conditionally finality, and the fourth horseman. I'll butcher so many of this again. Slug shotguns, 9%, fusion rifles, 7%, except 1,000 voices. Sniper rifles, 7%, exception of the Izagani burden, I'm butchering, Izanagi burdens. Owned edge shots and cloud strike storm. Glaive projectile 7%. Linear fusion rifle 5%. Increased damage versus minor red bars. This stacks with the base PVE damage increase. Sidearm, trace rifle, scout rifles, and bows 20%. Auto rifles and pulse rifle 15%. For pulse rifles, this is an addition to the above buff and graviton lance and revision zero heavy burst mods are included i.e pulse rifles will do 1.2 times 1.15 equals 38 percent more damage to red bars submachine gun 10 percent hand cans 5 percent increased damage versus major combatants orange bars trace rifles 20 percent increased damage globally including pvp machine gun 7 percent sword 7 percent with these damage increases the following spec mods have been retired Boss spec, taken spec, minor spec, major spec, and adaptive big one spec. Scout rifles updated the hit fire reticle to better show accuracy and aim assist state. Hand cannons general reduced the screen shake dealt to players by hand cannon projectile impact by 33%. Does not affect the flinch dealt to combatants. Heavy burst reduced the base recoil of its subfamily to make them more stable. Aggressives improve the state of two aggressive hand cannons that are returning to the final shape to be more competitive with our current offering. Uh, Kremil's Dagger, which is Iron Banner. Stability 23 to 31. Handling 23 to 31. Magazine size 8 to 9. Airborne effectiveness 10 to 21. That's a big jump. Those are all big jumps, honestly. Something new, which is Solstice. Stability is 27 to 30. Handling goes from 24 to 30, magazine size 8 to 9. Sniper rifles increase minimum reserves from 14 to 17 shots. Maximum reserve is unchanged. Change the way flinch works when taking damage from players. This does not affect incoming dam damage from combatants. Increase the screen shake duration by 25%. Increase the screen shake intensity by 350%. Reduce the camera roll by 25%. Linear fusion rifles reduce firing animation kick and recoil for adaptive linear fusion rifles kinetic damage type weapons no longer deal bonus damage to weapons damage to other combatant tiers is unchanged though for example a kinetic sniper rifle and a stasis sniper rifle of the same subfamily will deal the same damage to a boss 
wave grenade launchers. The size of the wave is now affected by the blast radius stats. This will mostly impact the width of the wave, though the length and height will also be scaled. The default display stat for the blast radius has been changed from 100 to 50, where 50 represents the previous baseline. Any stat over 50 will result in a larger wave segment than what was possibly possible before. Special ammo wave frame grenade launchers overperform as add clear weapons in their current state, so we've pulled the length of the wave back a little, reducing the length of the wave from 22 meters to 15 meters with the exception of dead messenger. Swords updated the sword reticle to better indicate the charge state. When the sword energy is consumed, the amount of delay the sword has before it begins is recharged now suddenly appears in the reticle. To fix an issue where the overwhelming battle song debuff from some missions would prevent sword from recharging or losing energy while guarding. They fix an issue where unpowered casters sword heavy attacks would not reset the sword's energy recharge delay. Fix an issue where uncharged adaptive sword heavy attacks cost the same amount of ammo as their charged counterparts. They now cost one ammo, same as other uncharged heavy attacks. Rocket sidearms added a slight delay to the detonation to allow perks to activate correctly if they required precision kills. Okay, um, let's move on. We have exotic weapons and then perks. Yep. Let's move on. Exotics, non-precision base, add clear exotic primary weapons, reduce splash damage by 10%. On the following weapons, Sunshot, Trinity Ghoul, Pol Polar uh, Polaris, Lance, Graviton Lance. Rat King swapped the firing an animation to the same used by other auto-fire sidearms. Dead Men Tell Baseline, Granule Spike, Stacks now grant stability in addition to aim assist stats and range, plus two per stacks. Increased reload speed benefit of cranial spike stacks. With catalyst, when hit firing, slightly reduced accuracy benefit, increased magnetism fall off scales, 1.6 to 1.7. Increased baseline rate of fire from 130 RPMs to 140 RPMs. Remove PVE only damage buffs that scaled with stacks of cranial spikes and added a 15% damage bonus of maximum stacks of cranial spikes. Colony now spawns additional insectoids robots on foul blow. More robots up to five spawn after tougher combatants. Touch of Malice increased duration of burn applied by the darkness ball against combatants from 2 to 3.5 seconds. Necrochasm, intrinsic burst, perk. Now provides increased reload speed after precision kills, increased duration of burn applied to the cursed thrall explosion against combatants from 2 seconds to 3.5 seconds. Catalyst has been rebuilt. One for thrall damaging three combatants and quick succession provides a period of increased damage, range, and aim system. Truth. Let's see. Truth increased area of effect AoE damage such that it doesn't lose noticeable damage to not dealing impact damage. Increased total reserve by 3. This is on top of the reserve change to high impact rocket launches from the 7.3.5 update. Queen Breaker. Increased damage versus boss, mini boss champions, and vehicles by 12%. Increased reserve ammunition by 3%. Symmetry Catalyst now provides plus 10 reload speed, plus 10 handling, and the Eddy current perk in addition to its existing effects. Cerberus plus 1. Focus Fire now will activate on special reloads following a kill and will no longer reduce range of range or rate of fire. Update a hit fire reticle to better convey weapon spread. Bastion rework Saint's Fist perk. Dealing damage with melee increase the charge rate damage and reload speed for a short duration. Landing a majority of pellets in a burst increases melee damage. Arana's bow breaking a match shield or piercing a champion's barrier will cause the target to ignite. Devil's Rune fix an issue where the firing animation from Devil's Rune would get applied to other equipped sidearms if the weapon was swapped during the firing animation. Gallahorn updated the visual of wolf pack rounds to match the damage type of the weapon. For example, on Gallahorn, they would they will use solar effects. 
on Royal Entry Void Rocket Launcher buffed by Gallahorn, they will use Void effects. Makes sense. Grand Overture. Grand Overture now displays Volley Ready instead of Rockets Loaded after a special reload to help better, in better indicate when the rockets are primed to fire on trigger pull. Osio Striga now has a 4 second cooldown on the Poison Burst on kills. Poison Burst from sustained damage does not receive this cooldown. The Lament reduce healing effect by 20%. While this weapon does inherit a 7% global buff towards swords, we reduce the damage of a high end of chained heavy attacks by 20% from that point. This means combos at lower stacks are less affected by the change than combos at higher stacks. Deterministic Chaos. This weapon is now intrinsically an anti-barrier. Intrinsic intrinsically. Stupid English. The heavy metal and vexadecimal perks have been have had their location and behavior swapped. Heavy Metal now causes every 4th bullet to make targets volatile. Vexadecimal now causes every 16th bullet to also weaken target. Divinity increases the number of shots required to generate the cage by 75% against combatants. PvP is unchanged. Ace of Spades fixed an issue that was caused the Memento Mori sound effect to replay when exit out of sprint. It's like that, that type of update does not need to be put in this. Who cares? Edge of Intent, Edge of Intent Healing Turret updated to match Speaker Sight Healing Turret. Edge of Intent's alternate weapon action projectile no longer bounces off walls, non-floor, and non-floor geometries. Healing Turret will spawn offset along the tangent of a surface hit. Healing Turret now applies Cure and Restoration, having the aspect Touch of Flame equipped approves, improves these effects. Cool. And then we have Perks. And we'll go into power and progression after that. And that will be all. Um, all. All of Critty will no longer work in Rumble. Archer's Gambit reduced the effect so it can be used on Legendary Weapon. Reduced draw time buff from 66 to 60%. Reduced buff duration from 8 to, eight to 4 seconds. But it can now stack up to 8 seconds. Grave Robber will now activate on dealing damage with a powerful melee in addition to strength standard melee kills. The fundamentals, fundamentals now maintain its state across death and respawn. Chain Reaction, branch between heavy and special ammo weapons, special about 15% smaller AoE size and 20% less damage, while heavy ammo, sorry, heavy same AoE as before and 30% more damage. Eddy Current now takes 1.5 seconds of sprinting to activate instead of 3. Also provides a bonus to handling and a 5% scholar on each stat at base. Being amplified will immediately activate the perks at its maximum effectiveness. Underdog instances of Underdog have been replaced with Pulse Monitor, Osmosis, and Permeability. These no longer drop off when pulling out a ghost or similar action. Now partially refill the weapon's magazine on activation. Chill Clip adjusted the number of slow stacks applied based on properties of weapons. In this case, rapid fire fusions like Riptide will still require three shots to freeze, but slower, slower firing fusions will only require two. All other archetypes have been unnerfed and only require two shots to freeze. Killing Tally, the Killing Tally perk on the original 21% Delirium machine gun has been updated to match the version found on random rolled weapons. High Ground, reworked to provide a stack damage bonus when getting kills in any context like Rampage, or instantly grant the maximum amount of stacks when damaging an enemy from the high ground. PVE max bonus increase to a 25% damage bonus and PVP max increase to 15%. Perks that currently match the player's equipped subclass have been changed as follow. Osmosis and Tessellation now match the damage type of the equipped grenade. Permability and Elemental Capacitor now match the damage type of the equipped super. Deconstruct now refills Preserve instead uh, from thin air and should trigger more reliably across weapon types. Headstone fixed an issue where Headstone used a stasis positive 
buff icon for its cooldown status message. Headstone, Headstone now uses a cooldown icon similar to other cooldowns. Pugilus, Pugilus fixed an issue where the melee buff visual effect repeatedly flashed when Pugilus was active, activated by melee damage over time. Dreamwork updated the work with additional weapon archetypes. Precision Instrument fixed an issue that caused this perk to activate too quickly on Burst Fire Linear Fusion Rifles. And Heavy Burst Intrinsic now slightly reduces incoming flinch. All right, we are going to skip some of the general because it's kind of just base, uh, like super basic cosmetic type stuff. So moving on to power and progression. Power bands have been updated. The power floor is 1900. Soft cap is 1940. Powerful cap is 1990. Hard cap slash pinnacle cap is 2000. For more information, go see April 25th, April, April 25th TWID. Uh, Sparrows adjusted the appline's dash sparrow to have available speed options similar to other sparrows and made auto reloading perk always available. Triumphs added strand fire team triumphs to all previous raids. These are not required for seal or title, but provide an additional option, optional challenge for those interested. And uh, the tower's weapon vendor, Banshee44, will now reset his weapon and their perk at the same time, along with all the other vendors at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard. Okay, so some more UI fix. Um, then we have the Wicked Implement Scout Rifle has been moved to Monuments of Lost Light. Its catalyst will now be available as a random drop via Ritual Playlist Post-Match Rewards. Updated new drops of Raid Adept from Crocious End and Root of Nightmares to have two traits in their trait columns. Added Weapon Enhancement to Raid Adept from Valid Disciple and King's Fall. Collecting base weapon patterns will now provide a boost per weapon set to the chance of getting a third trait in the trait column on new drops. This is this can be tracked via new triumphs in each raid respective collection. Momentum stack size limit has been increased from one to three. Mementos are no longer tracked in the inventory lab. Uh, fix an issue where raid adept weapons from the Pantheon triumphs drop without selected perks. Players will now see these perks applied. And they removed Zonnet and Harmonic Alloys. Acquiring a depth version of weapons now unlocks focusing for the base version of that weapon. Oh, fix an issue where anti champion mods are causing other weapon perks to fall off. It's like a big one. Fix an issue causing Mindbender and Ambition to not glow when getting kills. Fix an issue where intensity and some damage screen effects of various projectiles could cause potentially post sensitive issues. All right, that that was all of. Oh my god, I'm still missing like the cosmetic stuff that they added to this as well. So, uh, so if you want to see more of that, you just gotta go to Bungie. Uh, but other than that, that is the last big update before the final shape comes out June fifth, which will be tomorrow from the day of this recording, or today when this gets uploaded. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if we'll have another game after this. I don't think we will. So, uh, thank you for tuning in. This is a long episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to stay up to date for more video game updates or just random podcast episodes from us as well. And hope you enjoyed. If you're playing Destiny 2, let us know how Final Shape is. And if you really like it, if you don't, comment down below. Same with the other games that have came before this in this patch. So, until next time, everyone, take care. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you on the next two guys. One game.